Okay, we're back in Orlando, Florida for SAP Sapphire Now, Sapphire 2012. I'm John Furrier, joined my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Sapphire. We're here in Orlando. Day two, we'll be here tomorrow. Uh, this is our third year here, John, and uh, I think we're really getting a, a, a good sense of the transformation of SAP. Some bold moves by the co-CEOs, the big executives, and their, their chairman, Hasso Plotner, really doubling down on new technologies, in-memory, mobile, social, the cloud. Yeah, Dave, you know, people are trying to figure out what's going on in technology, and, you know, whether you're out there gaming and or, you know, looking at Facebook's IPO, which is happening this Thursday at a $96 billion valuation, Mark Zuckerberg's getting worth billions, new billion millionaires being minted all over the place. You look at Twitter and the, the rise of Twitter, the rise of Xbox and gaming, a new world has arrived, and the consumer market has changed all that. And so we're here on the ground with the Cube, our flagship telecast, Dave, uh, to talk to me. This is our third year. And we're seeing the mega trends, the ones that are going to change work and play. So what's interesting to me here about SAP Sapphire is we kind of teased about this last year is that business is becoming consumer-like. So things we see, trends we see in gaming, uh, multiplayer gaming, trends we see in how people use smartphones for play and for work, trends we see in Twitter are coming onto the enterprise specifically the role of Apple Computer. Apple Computer has shown the way for companies that they can actually operate a business that way. And you're seeing companies that were once, you know, monolithic, you know, closed doors inside the company, closed, are now opening up, going directly to the consumer. So this is all changing with the power of cloud computing, big data, mobility. And really, we're unpacking that day. So to me, I think that's the aha moment here is that it's all happening with companies like SAP, EMC, uh, VMware, and that's really a big trend, and that's the big story here. You know, and we had Reggie Jackson on earlier, and I was actually struck by his comments. Um, you know, he's here representing Callaway, and, and he was talking to Bill McDermott about um, SAP and what it stands for, and the P, he kept coming back to people. And you're hearing a lot about people, a lot about personalization, um, By and the way, did you know the hip thing? Do you know what I was talking about, the hip thing? No, I, I didn't. Tell, tell me that. Well, okay, I, so we asked it, Reggie Jackson. Said, was, so someone on Twitter said, ask him about that hip move. When he, he, so he hip checked somebody? Or, no, yeah. in Game 4 of the World Series in 1978 against the Dodgers, um, man on first and second, Reggie was on first, Lou Finella was on second. No, um, Thurman Munson was on second. Um, Lou Finella was up and hit a ground line drive ground ball. Reggie Jackson had to stop in between first and second ball was going to be caught, and he went on his plate, and it wasn't caught, and so the guy stepped on second, shortstop went to second, they went for the double play, the loop and Ellis, easy double play, Reggie, they allegedly claimed, turned his hip into the ball, and it hit him, the ball squibbed into left field, and loop and Ellis not only made first, went to second, Thurman Munson scored. They went up winning. Oh, I do. You know, I do now. I do remember that and play, and I and I thought he did it on purpose, but he said he didn't do it on yeah. purpose. Well, right? you remember the Red Sox when you know Alex Rodriguez did the elbow? Well, he <laughs> yeah, yeah, he slapped the, he yeah. slapped the ball out. So, of, uh, you know, that, you that know, was definitely on so, purpose. So you know, I didn't put it together. I, I, now I remember it. I had to look it up on Wikipedia. But when you think about it, did you see his reaction, Reggie Lewis, or Reggie Jackson's reaction? Yeah, he, he was. Like, um, Wait a minute, I want to talk about that. Obviously, he's been addressed. Hit. He was um, charged up. Yeah, that was a good segment, and, and uh, like I said, a lot of people didn't know he was a great football player, and, and, and he basically, I think in a, actually a humble way, but, but it was genuine, said he could have been a very successful professional football player and had a great career, but he chose to go to baseball for economic reasons. He needed the money. Dave, I want to ask you a kind of an analyst question because you are, you are covering the big trends. What do you think and what do you see, and what would you share with the folks out there that are, that are younger, that are in the industry, who are trying to, who haven't been through all the experience that we've been through, uh, and the cycles of innovation that we've been through. Um, how do you explain what's going on in today's world to someone who's, you know, under the age of between 15 and 30 about what's happening in this culture right now relative to technology? What would you, how would you explain to that person? Well, specifically as it relates to, you know, our world, this, this enterprise, I think that, um, you know, computers used to be something that were, you know, used in the back offices for just accounting. And, and the young people of this world, the, 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 the gamers, the people who are using devices and iPads, are actually dramatically changing our business. And it's amazing, right? It used to be technology value would trickle down into the smaller devices. It's absolutely the reverse now. You guys have covered this in Silicon Angle forever. Technology is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an embedded part of our lives. Uh, you can't 
do anything without touching technology. And I think that for the young people out there that are looking, you know, to to participate in that, there's just so many opportunities now. You know, we keep talking about gaming. You know, my, my eight-year-old wants to be a gamer. He wants to write programs for gaming. I'm really encouraging to to go on places like Justin TV to, you know, I mean, I don't mind when he's playing these video games because I think he's learning. And um, I think you got to dive in, you know, start building apps and start learning how to code and learn HTML5. I mean, I think that's that's where it's at. You can you can Tech do great. Tech is a lifestyle. I mean, so, you know, don't you think, I mean, we've been talking about this all the time in the queue is that, and the reason why we do this show, the queue, which you're watching here, folks, is that we want to go to where the stories are and we want to want to talk to the people who are making the big trends happen. The mega trends. We we go out and cover SAP for three days for eight hours a day because we can. And I think what's important is is that as technology changes, it's a culture. Reggie Jackson here, a baseball Hall of Famer in his sixties, talking about I'm going to get on Twitter. I already got my account from Jack Dorsey. Um, is exciting. You have celebrities in L.A. movie stars all have Twitter accounts. You have all the athletes have social media. Businesses are the last adopters of this trend. And so if you're a young person and you're on a gamer, you're living the culture of tech. Tech jewelry is soon will be a thing of the future um, where your ring or your watch will have some sort of function <laughs> relative to your multifunction peripheral environment. Um, but this is the future that Schnabe is talking about. The CEO of SAP is talking about an intelligent network. Certainly from a business perspective, we have to talk about that data. But really what he's talking about, what Bill McDermott and Schnabe and their team are talking about is building the architecture to consumerize everything in business so that work and play, there is no distinction. Well, and I want to get your opinion on that. Well, and I think that I think do you that agree? I mean, do you... I think that, uh, um, I think directionally what it, what it says to me, it underscores that with the ubiquity of these devices, I think we're going to essentially, I'll call it virtualized supply chains. You know, so SAP's got all this... It's touching so many different companies and so many different parts of the country, but they're largely independent and mobile and the cloud are going to allow us in big data and analytics are going to allow us to bring all these components together, these supply chains, and create value that we haven't seen before. I mean, I think it's, it's billions and trillions are going to be made in this next wave. Literally. Well, you think about you know just the concept of, of the spinning electromechanical disk. Um, it's kind of absurd when you think about the the world that we live in. I mean, I, I will not ever have a spinning disk in my laptop again. Shortly, you won't, um, because there's no point in it. Right? The economics are, are at the point where you know, this, can you imagine having a spinning disk in your iPod? You wouldn't anymore. So, unless you're Dave Butler. <laughs> What do you think about the Facebook idea? I mean, the big news this week for outside of the that massive activity happened here at SAP, the um, ginormous Facebook IPO is happening. If you've been sitting under a locker playing too much Xbox and video games, you might not know, but Facebook just filed their initial public offering on the 18th, and it's going to be a magnificent billion dollar valuation and raising billions of dollars. So I'm very excited about it, John. I mean, I've, I've said that I think it's going to be the third big you know, wave of IPOs, the first being Netscape, the second being Google, and, and now Facebook. And I think it's going to lift all ships. And uh, I think it's going to tick off. I, th I think we are on the verge of a tech boom. We're certainly on, we're certainly in a bubble, as you know. You live in California, in Palo Alto, the heart of the bubble land. And, uh, but like, as you've said many times, it's different this time around. There's, there's actually, you know, real business being done. And that's the big question I have for Facebook. I mean, I think that I'm excited about it. I think it's going to going to do very well. I think it will sustain um, for a, a, a long period of time, or at least a, a reasonable period of time. The big question is, you know, can it generate the cash of a Google? You know, uh, because Netscape couldn't. 
we know all know what happened to Netscape, but I think that um, that Facebook has the potential to do that. So I'm excited. I think certainly through the end of 2012, it's going to be a big boost for tech and a big boost for tech stocks. I mean, I would be, you know, there's obviously concerns about Europe, but I think that uh, in general, this market wants to go up in the near to midterm. Okay, well, you're watching SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. If you want information around what's going on in the tech business, uh, if you want to know what's going on in this enterprise area and cloud, mobile, and social, the hottest innovation areas in technology, you have to go to SiliconAngle.com. If you want to get basic tech news, go to the other site, like TechCrunch, uh, VentureBeat, Big O, and all things B. They have all the news. That's great. We want to find out what it means. Come to SiliconAngle.com. And certainly, if you want to dive into the research, go to wikibond.org, wikibond.org. Uh, it's all free. We publish our content for free. All this video is free. We get underwriting for things like this, and SAP and EMC helped us get here. And so we want to thank them for that. But we're always constantly covering the next wave of innovation. And I was Peter Schoen from the SAP program, our new analytics package. And, and we have a program that we use predictive analytics to predict trends in the tech business. And that allows us to be first. And, and always accurate in our trend prediction. So if you follow SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon.org, you will find out that you will be the most informed and ahead of the curve on key trends. And that's what our promise is to you. And uh, we'll report on all the top stories. And we'll take the cue and we'll go to where the stories are. If they can't come to us and we can't find them, we'll go to where all the action is. It all starts at SiliconAngle.com. And that's a point of tech innovation. And on the other side, they belong to Wikibon.org. Yeah, we're very proud of the fact that everything we do is made available to our, our audience for free. You don't have to you don't have to sign up, but if you, if you do, you get you know some added benefits. But you know, there's no no need to do that. If you want to publish, you actually have to sign up because we were getting so much spam, John. We had to actually put that that filter up. But um, but otherwise, everything's free on the site. And uh, you know, our goal is to help help people learn from their peers. And facilitate interactions, and that's what we've done here. And as you know, it's, we've had a great partnership. And well, we, we're in our, our third season here at Sapphire, our third event. Uh, we were an operational now for two full years in the field. We've interviewed over 600 guests in, in two years: uh, CEOs, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, celebrities, baseball stars. Um, we want to strike a signal from the noise. My name is John Furrier. I'm the founder of Silicon Angle, and I'm with Dave Vellante. Um, and we're excited to bring you all the action. Now, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next guest and talk more about tech and what's happening with Sapphire. We'll have to wait for Hasso Plotner and Jim Snobby, the CEO of SAP, who will be on shortly today.